You have to make a declaration somewhere for entertainment tanks or cinema tanks or whatever. And the university also wants to know you have to keep properly audited books. The, um, the particular paragraph when I find it is that suppliers, uh, sorry, no, that's not the one. Anyway, I, I quote it again from memory and just in a broad outline, properly audited or properly kept records must be made and be available for check of money received and what happens to it. The next point is that in order to prevent rip-offs and people having little quiet movie shows up in the ninth floor or down in the basement or whatever, uh, and as I said, like the lumber camp operation, charging people five bucks at the door, the university would like to know what's going on. Financial considerations. Everybody pays for the projectionist. Okay. All groups charging admission will pay all applicable taxes. Fair enough. Uh, all revenues and expenses be carefully documented and suitable records kept for any legally required audit. And that the showing of films purely for profit be discouraged. Because this is where people say to themselves, aha, we can get this film and that film that they're showing in the Eros or up in Saint Laurent. Five bucks a head, lads, up to the tenth floor. Right? That's not really what, uh, that's really not what officially uh, we're, we're, we're talking about. Is that a good answer? Is that fair enough? Um, you'd have to issue tickets. You have to keep books. If you took money at the door, then you would be running a cinema operation in terms of the municipal regulations. You'd have to check out the operators, the whole, the whole bit. May I just add? Please. Because uh, I, I am a, I'm a scientist to be a licensed projectionist, so I know a lot of legislation. Irregularity. Yes. What, what, sorry, on that point, what's the distinction as between a private showing on these premises and a showing to which the public is admitted? Okay. Right. It's very important that, uh, again, if the public is there, okay, whether it's paying or non paying, okay, it's the public. And as a projectionist, I'm responsible as a fire marshal to make sure that everything's handled properly to ushers, etc. And also as a man, as a representative of the censor board, to make sure that people don't pass me through.
people who have to leave, leave, and those who want to stay, the next one will be video on campus in about 20 minutes. If there's anything further any gentlemen would like to say, please go ahead and then we'll call it. No, I'd just like to recap. I have necessarily to thank Mr. Himmelbrand for his very useful and um, informative talk. Uh, the points we went over were that film comes in different gauges, that you've got 81 10 available downstairs, and you can also run shows on Loyola. Remember, we're one university, there are other facilities there. There's not a big auditorium if you ever want to run a cinema show. But there are procedures available, um, and uh, I'll make copies of the feature film task force report available to you, that we are in the non-theatrical area, and you have to watch the whole right bit. I'd like to wind up just by making one point that um, the gentleman in the front asked about damage to film. Film is very delicate. It's also very strong. And um, although you may be horrified to discover that you've torn a film, this is in fact uh, not, a, not a dreadful disaster. They can be repaired in various ways and they can be spliced and you'd never notice uh, some cases of damage. So don't get terrified if you discover that there's just one tear in a film. If you've chewed up a hundred feet <laughs> by uh, badly threading it and ruining the sprocket holes, or putting a terrible thing to do is to put scratches down a film, then that is serious. But fair wear and tear is something that we have to accept. And uh, again I repeat, if you're running this through the audiovisual department, our people are qualified. Instant dismissal at the first sign of a scratch, for example. <laughs> right, Basil? Uh, and um, that we have film inspection machinery, film repair machinery, and uh, film cleaning machinery. And all of these services are given. So don't bother about that side of it. OK? The one thing that, you know, I'm supposed to be training. I'm the man who trains all the students in the classrooms and all that. They are trained. No, but this is just a piece of demonstration film <laughs> that is a B-wind anyway and unusable mm. under normal circumstances. I just carry this around in this bag with a few other specimens to show, uh, to show what the film looks like. No, I would um, I'd recommend you know, that if you ever have films, you wear the white cotton gloves that people do, that you never move film up and down on itself in a roll or in a, on a core, this is called like this, because this is what scratches film. You trap dust between two, uh, two rolls in the spiral, and then when you move, the, when you move the, the bodies of film sideways one against the other, you get horizontal scratches, which are terrible. Well, thanks very much. I think we should have a break now and stop recording for the moment, Bill. Thanks a lot. OK. And we'll again, Film, like film in your, in your everyday life and your text attitudes to it. On campus, you should uh, attempt, to, attempt to be creative, attempt to be original, and think of ways in which it could be used. Now, you're all entertain your student entertainment and student activities. So it's available to you in Concordia. Do you know that there is a, an electronic bulletin board that is on? Thanks again, Al. Good. Uh, that uh, there's first student owned television in Canada, biggest and best, called CUTV. 
What a video cartridge machine is. Do you know that you've got um, commercial television viewing outlet cases? Do you know that you can push mobile receivers into places like the, the student lounge on the sixth floor? Had you ever thought of getting a group together to watch a particularly good or a particularly exciting game, a football match, a film even? Uh, do you, are you interested enough in improving, for example, your French to watch regularly viewing from, say, Radio Quebec and television programs? Do you know, did you know, that we can record material off the air? Questions that I'm putting to you could be adapted by you to improve the facilities that you're offering colleagues, the student groups that you represent. I expect you to ask questions and amplification of these things, but to start with, I'd like uh, Basil, Mr. Vasilio, to uh, straight and talk about some of the devices that you may just heard of. The porter pack. What a porter pack is? That's a porter pack. That little camera, that video recorder, or video recorder, or tape recorder, or VTR in the corner, chattering away. Um, if we talk about a mic, we're talking about either one of these slung uh, television sets you them in the ceiling or that thing there or the little miniaturized. This is a VCR, it's a cartridge sitting on it. Um, a visor is, do you know what, a mic. Basil will explain all these things and please don't hesitate to ask. Right, Mr. Vazir? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just want to say that I'm and I'm president of uh, CUTV. I was invited here to talk about uh, television as a student organization. The first thing I say about CUTV is that it's the only television station run by, as far as I know, in Canada, which has regular programming on televisions, okay, on an internal television network. Now, uh, I have a video cassette machine, which I'll explain to you, and a television monitor with some CUTV on it. It was made especially for this lecture. <laughs> um, one of the things that I want to say uh, is that Concordia Television is in existence basically to explain to the student body, anyone who's interested, what the television medium is all about, every single aspect of it. Uh, we're not only interested in uh, distribution, which is putting programs on the television, but in the production of television programs uh, and uh, procuring movies, uh, public relations with other television stations and things like that. Uh, for next year, I'm hoping to do several things and uh, hoping to receive some help from people here uh, in that I'm thinking of possibly trying to get departments within the university to get involved with CUTV in the sense of possibly giving credits to students uh, who are interested in helping us in the different aspects of television. For example, uh, Concord University needs a public relations man for external affairs and uh, basically the membership thought it wouldn't be if we can get someone from the commerce say in marketing to do our public relations for us properly uh, three credits in an introductory course, thing to that effect. Yes. I'm sorry, public relations man, because I guess I'm a sexist. Okay, public relations or thing. Uh, okay. Now, it's, uh, it's great need for a trip, things like that. So obviously, people can get in respect. Okay. Uh, it's very well noted throughout the television industry that the only organizations which trains people professionally. Uh, the audiovisual professional by studio very frequently and the C also uses a studio to train. Now there's a catch-22 problem in uh, television in Canada, uh, specifically the CTV, and that is the, unless you have experience in the field and you can only get the experience in Canada CTV. <laughs> so this is really only outlets which trains people properly professional aspect of television, okay? It's uh, we're able to take out a port of a one-camera mobile, uh, your friends, and it's another thing to actually have to write a script, to know how to produce the thing, to know how to edit it, 
and uh, to distribute it properly. Okay. I'm going to show you this um, thing here. It's called the video cassette recorder. It's available at the audiovisual department. This machine here not only plays back but records in color. Okay. Now. Queenan's writing a VCR video cassette recorder. And on it, I have a program which I'll show you right now on CPD. Concordia University Television is about, and you've seen some images of professional studio and people it takes to do a program. Uh, this is one of the major difficulties with most student-run organizations, and that is um, students are very energetic, uh, very excited, very willing to get involved, but when it comes down to, to the nitty-gritty 
they really don't like doing it. Okay. And uh, I'd like to expand something about television in that it takes a lot of energy, a lot of labor. To do a one hour production, a proper one hour production, it takes approximately anywhere from 15 hours to over 48 hours of work, solid work. That's not just loafing around, that's actually working, okay? Uh, the news show that you saw there took us, because it's live, took us approximately six hours after setting up lighting, after getting the crew together, after looking at the scripts, like everyone has to look at the script. Cameramen have to know exactly what they're going to be doing, okay, whether they're going to be taking long shots, close-ups, pans, dollies, anything, okay. They have to know all these things in advance. Um, you have to prepare your switcher, uh, the switching man, uh, so he knows the script's going to be all about, okay, whether he's going to do a lot of work or little work, exactly what he, ha he should be looking for in the production. Uh, this summer, there's no one from the DSA here because they're not supposed to know this, this summer we'll be working on a series of tapes since it takes such a long time. We've gotten, managed to get a lot of our crew back together for this summer to uh, do something which has never been done before here, and that is a series of programs. It's a science fiction detective story. What is that? Time is going fast. Oh, okay, so you want me to speak quickly. Okay, so what I'm saying is that it's, it's a very difficult process, okay? And this is one thing that has to be mentioned about the television medium. I think I've said enough about that. This thing here is called a porta pack And uh, this is the camera part. It can obviously be handheld or put on a tripod. The other part of it is this thing here, which can be carried on the shoulder or put on a table. And as you notice, it's very small, right? very light. Pick it up with two hands. And it takes a half hour tape. Okay, if you just put the two together, which I won't at the moment because I'm much too lazy, uh, you can record anywhere, uh, whether you have a wall outlet or not. It has a battery, it's self contained. You can do anything you want with it, go out on location. Uh, that's one of the disadvantages to that thing. Obviously, the quality is much better, but you always have to have a plug, a wall outlet. You're stuck with an umbilical cord. Video cassette recorder. Are there any questions? How do you use it? Okay, basically, you plug the camera into this thing over here, and uh, just, you use it basically like a tight tape recorder. You put it into record and it's play, and it goes. It doesn't go right now because the camera's got to it. It can also be used as a playback unit. You can run it through a television like this, or if you want to see it instantaneously while you're out in the field, you can look at it through the television picture tube, which is in here. Okay, it's small, but at least you can see what you've done. This is the advantage of television over, or videotape over film, in that with film, you could shoot a whole day's work, and then you have to send it to the lab. It comes back, say, two days later, and you find out that you've overexposed everything. With video, you can play it back instantly, the moment it's done. Okay, this is an advantage. Um, are there any other questions? Is there audio with that? Yeah, there is audio. Another advantage to videotape over film. Would you just like to identify where the microphone is? Oh, okay. Now there's a microphone built into this unit here, and that's funny black grill thing here. It's a condenser microphone. It can pick things up up to around 10 feet. I assume. Yeah, it can. Um, and it just picks up basically all the noise in the room. If you want to isolate your noise, uh, that is, you don't want all the crowds and people walking around, you can put a microphone to the porta pack. And I have a microphone. And one will, one will do, right? And you can hand hold it and use it as an interviewing device. You know, uh, aiming it at a specific person, it disengages the microphone and isolates your noise to whatever this microphone can pick up. Now, the advantage over uh, film with video again is that you always have lip sync. There's no worry about um, saying if you don't load your projector properly, you'll have the mouth moving and the words that are coming out at a different time. The other thing is that you don't have to carry a tape recorder with you. With film, you have to carry a tape recorder. And later on, when you film, you have to get this thing called a mag strip, which is um, a piece of tape, right, magnetic tape, 
which you record it on 20, the sound 24 frames per second, and then you have to go to the labs and they put it on to the film optically. On the side of a film, you have a film here with the sprocket holes on this side, the image here, and there's a soundtrack here, which is just funny squiggly lines. Sort of, they change as uh, the different sounds you want change. Okay, and uh, this light passes through this 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 optical track, and there's this sensitive photo cell which finger noise should be. Okay, so you can record out this thing. Okay. For those that are interested, we can probably uh, look at this rigged up and that thing over there, which is a yeah. yes, portable version. Um, yes, you can. Now, we have editing facilities for inch, which is what this tape is, or one inch tape, which is one inch width of tape, university. Uh, both are black and white facilities. Okay? You cannot edit color and you cannot tape in color in university yet, because we don't have color facilities. Okay? Now, for the one inch tape, if you're doing something in the studio, you have a qualified operator. You can't do it yourself. Uh, for half inch, it's very easy to learn how to do it. All you need is basically uh, two VTRs, videotape recorders, one just a normal VTR and the other which has an editing facility in, within it. Okay, And uh, it's just basically a question of marking the tape and putting it back at equal amount distance on both machines. And when the mark comes to a specific queuing point, you push the record button, and that's how you can edit. It seems like, uh, it seems to me like, uh, just as you know, a suggestion, uh, is that, uh, you know, I mean, you say you have like regular viewing and like, programming schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean that it, the problem is that they're usually on the TVs in the halls, and that people don't usually like to stand in the house well for okay. a few hours watching TV, and that if possibly they could, you know, have a have a room, you know, and, and people would know well not really go in and, and sit down. And, and okay, well, as you notice on every television monitor within the university, there is this little picture that says you may watch CUTV on channel nine, eleven to two p.m. Monday to Friday. Now, any classroom in, within any room of the uh, Sir George Williams campus. They have a television monitor. You can switch to channel nine, turn it on, and watch television. I know at the Norris Building is a very popular thing between classes or during lunchtime, which is basically what our program is for, to sit within an empty classroom and watch programming. Uh, the hall building, unfortunately, is very heavily used. Okay. Uh, we tried to arrange at the beginning of this year to have specific <coughs> classrooms for CUTV during this programming period. The difficulty with that is that there was no classroom in the hall building which was left unused during this period of time. Okay, So we're left basically with two monitors. However, uh, people do stand and watch okay? because uh, each day we have people coming down from our <coughs> Explore Distribution Center to count the number of people watching programs. Okay, And they stay there for a period of 15 minutes and count how many people stay, how many people just pass by, how many you know, we try doing a little bit of statistics in that respect, and we have a viewing audience of approximately 200 people within the Sir George Williams campus each day, of which about half of them stay for the whole programming period. Okay, that's uh, quite a number of people, considering that they're within the hall building. They have to stand and watch television rather than sit. Mr. Vasily, would you like to say something about the um, <clears throat> the sort of non in house production? You show Monty Python, don't you? And okay. we show old movies. Yeah. Now, uh, we do something which is not necessarily legal, but uh, we still do it. There's no way that anyone could prosecute us, and that is record things off the television which we feel the student body would have an interest in. Uh, those are movies which are very late at night or Monty Python, which at one point in time was on at 11.30 Saturday nights, which meant someone had to come down here at 11.30 and actually take the program. And uh, there's a very positive response to do it. 
Uh, we had re we have requests all the time to take certain programs which uh, do not feel are of some in value, but they can't see them because of classes and stuff. So the Adams family and Stars were recorded. <laughs> uh, we record many of the major sports events. I may add, unfortunately, this year our sports director uh, got very, very busy in the hockey period at Sir George, so we didn't manage to show the final games, but for the beginning of the um, hockey season at Sir George, we're showing all the games uh, here, and there's a great response for that, too. Uh, one of the things with CUTV, which is uh, very important to remember, is that you have to have requests to take activities within the university, okay? Uh, we're not here to hustle, uh, and we really don't know if it's appreciated unless someone tells us. Most of the time we get information just off billboards, and then we have to try and find a university event. Uh, for next year, I'm trying to do the whole advertising spiel, and uh, hoping that somebody will come to and us constantly having to go to them. It's a very, very good service, uh, as I said, 200 people a day, large audience. And it's very effective because a lot of other televisions does teach them as easy as they look at uh, a 48 hour, hour program which is shown and then erased. Uh, really does satisfaction. I'm the type. Yes. Any more questions? I just have a comment. Um, we had some of our programs paid for CUTV. Basically, our, our view was that the, we would spend maybe $1,500 on programs here once, and the best quality was. As you can see, um, CUTV is pretty well organized to cover student needs. I think we would prefer student organizations to do CUTV. They have a certain amount of limited facilities, which I'll enumerate in a moment. They have the personnel, which is actually the same personnel that we use for our productions, because our own is limited in this area. If we need a crew, we use CUTV crew. Um, we've been doing a fair amount of recording for the DSA, in the last year, of various events that have been taking place in the auditorium, but it's not really what we're here for. And of course, being non academic, we have to charge, which isn't in the city, DSA. Uh, I suppose I'll give you a run of what has in the way of hardware and, and what we've offered. Tape you saw CUTV is actually the studio that I can. We have a with CUTV, or it's with the D, and CUTV is the nominee in the con. If the DSA is dealing with the way you have to appear a purchase order, the executive to use any of our services. Obviously, it'd be extremely inconvenient for something as immediate as television, where you often want to miss it is a very short note. And the result is signed a contract on a year to year basis by we will provide for the signature of one of those of CUTV. We allow them to use studio space and facility, and we give them preferable rates. For example, examples if you are using that they were to a, to a, a in user at about $70 a day, which of course is very expensive, and it'd be for the DSA to expend it. So we've worked out a system. They actually only get record, um, charged for the um, recording time of the program. So if they do a show, maybe get a charge of $20 for that. 12 or 15 hours that they've used in setting up and so forth and so on. We just really done outside that we were using the studio, so lost to us. This 30 or $40 is just because on the lights in a place like the big studio, we are actually using a fair amount of, of expend. A single one kilowatt lamp instant costs fifteen dollars. Has a life of about uh, twenty-five, thirty hours. So there we're talking about seventy-five cents for the time that the thing is switched on. I have thirty of those on, and the thing really starts to get rather expensive. Um, CUTV, as you, as, as um, 
that has a solution service which serves the monitors that you see and can also be the main floor. It can catch up the one of the problems is the information office would carry class change at the same hour as the peak hours, the lunchtime period that's to catch programming. I think that CUTV somehow has to find more outlets in the coming years for distribution of its programs are essentially only two maybe monitors which are fixed on their output. It's a big classroom, but that really isn't. They also have a like the one at the which um, can be used for recording this or events in H110, as well as in return for some space up some task, they have three key little studio on here. Uh, there's all use of studio. This is a, has a tank. They're allowed to use it uh, free of charge. So there is a facility. There is a mixer, switcher, audio board. It's a complete. It can either be used in, in the studio or else it can be taken out and taken out for such events as it has been in the past. Not so much in the latter half of this year. The production facility available free of charge. However, as soon as they want to do something and get into studio A, it's start cost a little more. And there are a few other, of course. Videotape is cheap. And this is why I'm saying you record something and then it's it's 48 hours of production work is erased. They're erased because they want to necessarily erase it. It's because that roll of tape costs $45. And that's expensive. It's one of the big problems with the tape is at least reusable. Something like that on your shelf is, is fairly expensive. And um, I think one of their biggest expenses is videotape. Um, actually, I suppose I could enumerate. We have a handbook, by the way, which I don't know if any of you have seen, which is a listing. Oh, you have one there. You've got one there. This is a listing of all the cities that we have. It not only covers television, but um, other areas. The rental rates are, uh, we will give you on application. It's difficult to list everything. In. But, of course, if you go through CUTV, then it's far more economical they decision they can provide you with the expert personnel to work they quite often rather leering people just to take video uh, and really all oh, their comments. It's um excuse me add the reason why uh what we so feel is very very because uh quarter pack such a loss approximately a thousand five two thousand dollars about two thousand dollars which one camera mobile just the camera alone This is, this is one of the problems. We have, if you rent into of CUTV, then we invite an operator. And that, of course, is an added expense. And that can't be at any um, special rate because uh, the higher of an operator is at an hourly rate, and we're paying them by the hour. Um, I guess I could say. I'll, I'll leave these things out here. If, uh, This is sort of a rough guide. I'll show you the type of rental rates that you would expect to pay. Uh, mobile equipment. The porter pack works out at about eight dollars an hour. It's very expensive. Is there all the equipment owned by CIP or by audiovisual department? Well, it's owned by the university. The DSA, you know, the DSA equipment isn't. The DSA equipment was bought through us and is bought through us. And uh, it's either bought on the basis of a lease back and a dollar purchase after three years or some other arrangements. Uh, up till now, most of the equipment that CUTV has has been bought that way. This last year, they bought some just with a straight cash payment. But other than the very basic units, which is there, maybe three VTRs, four VTRs, and a camera, it's all owned <coughs> by the university. and. It's been our budget is assigned for, for academic purposes, which is the problem. In uh, in that we have to charge rental on this stuff to to groups which aren't it's strictly within the academic framework. It's one of the constrictions that we have, and it's it's per, it's our budget is gauged on the enrollment and the type of courses that are given in the school. It's um, the capital budget items are dictated from on high. We don't have very much option. Anything over three hundred dollars is considered capital, and that's dictated by Quebec and you're given it or you're not given it. It's um, sort of a constriction. The, um, yes, that's about it. Uh, the typical rental rates, that was one camera mobiles. 
Well, as I said, Studio A works out about $270 a day, which is an awfully big expense, but that's about a quarter of the rate that you would find in a similar studio outside this university. Our rates are, are very, very cheap on the commercial market, but they're still, we, we recognize too great for any, any, any organization like the DSA. And so that's why we prefer to deal through a group like um, CUTB, because they can provide a thing like a crew. Now, to run a big studio like that, we probably had maybe 10 people on the crew. And to, to finance that is pretty astronomical. I don't know if I want to say anything about that profile thing that you have there. This was, Ben knows more about it than I do, but this was an idea that our production people had to get for the university's benefit people that the DSA or the student organizations bring in to the school on tape for the benefit of the general university community. It's right. Mr. Schofield is referring to this little brochure of which we've, we're leaving copies on the on the table we'll distribute afterwards. The idea is that we thought it was a pity that we could have somebody like Buckminster Fuller, R.D. Lang, Krishnamurti, or any eminence like that uh, into the university and not leave any record. Uh, they're here once, they may never, uh, people in Concordia may never have the chance to, to know how they look, how they talk, what their ideas are. And so there was a short interview type uh, format developed for this. Uh, the details about how you can request such a service or get integrate the uh, speaker programs of your own associations into it is all in here and we could take inquiries. It would be too lengthy to go into just now. But the idea is that we interview somebody for, for example, a half an hour of exposition of their ideas. Okay? Anyone have any questions? In terms of um, rates, mm -hmm. uh, we have dealt with you on an extensive basis. Mm -hmm. And generally, um, I just want to say that we have found your services to be very, very satisfactory. Like the cooperation of your staff has been fantastic. I say that to, you know, this. In terms of helping us out, because we all know what we're doing when we get something like this, or we want people to come down and shoot something, we have no idea what it takes. But you've been very patient and everything else, and uh, people should not hesitate to use uh, the audiovisual facilities. I think they'll find them extremely cooperative. I'd like to say something in extension of a remark that Mr. Schofield made, and that is relevant to this point, Bill, if I may. The position of the audiovisual department is that we are one of the offices, one of the services inside Concordia University. We are asked to look after equipment provided by the Quebec taxpayer for the cause of education in Quebec, full stop. We may not work outside of what's called our mandate we're not allowed to offer the gear we've got, the equipment you see in this room, just at random for any purpose whatsoever. It's here to support the academic program. As Mr. Schofield said, as Mark said, uh, bulbs burn out, heads get worn, equipment breaks down. We're supposed to maintain it. If we dedicate any part of the working life of a piece of equipment to a cause other than the support of academic credit courses, then we have to account for it. This is the reason that we're forced to draw up these regulations and to impose charges. And again, it's not a matter of choice. We just have to do it that way. The, the, the sort of brief statement of our policy is on the first page of the, um, the brochure that you've all got available, and I'd just like to summarize again what it is. Um, we are provided with budget by the Ministry of Education of the province of Quebec to support educational programs. We can thereafter, uh, we're t it's tolerated that we use our equipment, our resources for promoting the quality of life on the campus. But we're forced to recover, if you like, operating costs. 
We're not in business, we're not in business at all, but we're above all not here to undercut the commercial operations outside. And we have to be very careful that um, if somebody comes to us and says uh, we'd like to do a television studio operation or we'd like to produce a film, that we're not unfairly competing with legitimate commercial activities. That's all. I hope that's self-explanatory. I'm not apologizing, I'm just saying that's the way it is. Don't think that we're ripping you off. Don't think that we're imposing these charges so that I can have a carpet in my office. Come and see my office sometime. And if you've got any spare pieces of carpet, maybe we could do a deal somehow. Okay? Thanks. It's still Mark's session, if you have any questions. Uh, could I ask now, uh, uh, supposing uh, uh, we have a certain event that's taking place in terms of our club, the Religious Society, say, which we would like to have uh, you know, on tape or show. Um, I presume that I would, I would, approach, I would approach you with that. Okay, or, uh, or like, what, what, what do I do? Now that's one thing. And the other thing is, for example, last night there, were, there was a speaker here who the thing could have been videotaped or could have been, you know, we could have had like, this kind of interview thing on a profile or whatever, but, uh, you know, like, what, what is the procedure and how do I go about it, you know, to, to set that up? And is there, you know, what is the, you know, what is the charge involved, if any? And, Okay, the policy at Concordia University Television is that we're only going to take uh, events within the university if someone approaches us to do so. Uh, the reason why is because if we we didn't do that, we'd find ourselves uh, with mounds of tape that are really quite useless after one show. Now, uh, if you're particularly interested in recording something for the annals of history, shall we say, then we're forced to charge you the price of the tape, okay? Um, because our members are basically there to learn about television, we're not going to obviously charge you the expenses that are incurred in editing the tape or using studio time or possibly renting, say, a porta pack okay? or a one-camera mobile. Now, there are certain things, obviously, which uh, CUTV can't handle. The finest example of that would be the religious symposium. Uh, there would be no way that uh, CUTV would handle it. It's just, we just don't have the capacity to do so. So you really have to see the audiovisual department or something like that. Uh, the best thing to do as a student organization uh, is to, if you're interested in, say, videotaping something or doing a series of tapes, we did one on, on consciousness, spiritual consciousness, uh, is to approach Concordia University Television, uh, the executive producer, small study on it to see whether it's feasible or not, okay? Uh, we're running as a proper television station would do. We're not running out of all over the place just trying to do productions, okay? Uh, if we find that it's very feasible, if we find that it would make a very good tape or a series of tapes and that we're capable of doing it, we can afford to do it, then by all means we do it. If not, we tell you, well, you know, you can always go down to the audience basically the process to, uh, to as a student organization to visit CTV and then from there if we can't do it really on the visual department. Um, are you saying in other words that this should be in, 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 in terms of a particular uh, context or like you're saying well or just to have it sort of recorded for the annals of history or something like well, that. Well I, I, you know I understand that they you know, it, it can't, it, you know, it's not really that valuable. Uh, unless uh, there is, you know, like uh, I think you were mentioning in terms of, of, of you know, when people are here, uh, recording it for later viewing here or possibly at some future date, being able to exchange it with other universities or, or something like that. And, you know, is it, it, you know, are things recorded in that way and just, you know, kept on, on record or? Yeah, a lot of the interviewers that are here, and they're in the um, auditorium, you'll notice that there is a uh, three camera mobile uh, set up in the auditorium, and we do a recording of them. Okay, now uh, we keep the tape for as long as we can, and it's a very 
very important person, but Master Pola, for example, uh, what if we had Swami Sushi, we, we have the Swami Sushi Dananda, uh, we keep it for as long as the tape lasts, okay? But if you're interested in doing production, say, of someone who comes here or an event that's happening, say, the religious, religious club or the science fiction club, the science people have a party, should be recorded. Um, obviously, if, if we feel like it's, it's important in the sense of television media, teaching people of television media, okay, other aspect of it, we'll do it. If you want to take a preserve or you want to keep the tape, we charge you for the tape, you get a coffee. Okay. Uh, you know, as I said before, uh, CTP is particularly interested in teaching people about the television. We will do anything to expand the knowledge on that. But we're, we're not here as an entertainment device for a whole student body. I, I make the assumption that every student here is a member of CTV at large. But uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to record every single event for posterity that happens in the university. So, in other words, I would uh, uh, speak to you about it. like. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and, if, and if the decision is that it's worthwhile, then it's, then it's video tape. It's video tape. Yeah. And uh, if, it, if it gets dated quickly, obviously we erase it. If it uh, is valuable. But like for to say you know, last night, for example, if you decided to videotape it, would you then charge for the, for the cost of the tape? Um, if you wanted a copy of the tape, or if we, you know, uh, obviously you get charged uh, for a half inch copy, which is kind of four a roll. Um, if we, we felt that uh, the tape would only survive, say, a year of showing, other than, and then it would get dated, uh, and you still wanted to keep it within our library, we'd still charge you for it. Okay. Tape is a very, very valuable commodity. Space is a very valuable commodity. Uh, the offices of CUTV are smaller than this classroom, the whole office. Okay. Now, if we were to store every single tape we did, cost would be phenomenal. Also, our library would be so large. Okay. Uh, so that's why we're forced into a position of erasing the tape uh, as soon as they become dated. Uh, and we're forced to charge people for a library rate, you know, uh, to keep the tape. They do want to keep it, say, to view it three years from now. Do you keep the tape? Uh, 
Uh, no, Bill, <coughs> pardon me, I don't have anything to uh, add. My colleagues, Mark and uh, Basil, have done their usual job in laying out the, the facts and the services and so on that are available to you. I'd just like to say one thing, though. This should please be regarded as just an introduction to the whole area. All of us tonight have attempted to generalize to give you the quick answer. Please don't go to anybody that I mentioned, like Irish Robbins, and say, Ben Queenan said last Tuesday night that, uh, because this gets me and maybe Mark and maybe Basil into trouble. Take the word of the people there that, um, you know, the things are as they are. I, we haven't misled you this evening, but don't uh, walk away as if you know the whole story. You understand? Take whatever the expert tells you and recommends when the occasion comes for you to, to want to go into detail. And the other point is that uh, this is a chance for me to get the, the advertising plug-in. Our uh, aim is, uh, our approach is that you are clients, you are our clients. We're here in the end to serve you because that's what the university is about. Uh, our idea is to promote the use of the modern communications media in all their aspects in uh, campus life. That's the end of the plug. I have nothing more to say except to thank uh, Mark Schofield and Basil Vasiliou and to say that if there's anything more, remember this just was an introduction. If you take the pamphlets, you'll find out how to track us down in our layers. And, uh, you might get eaten up, but I don't think you will if you just knock on the door politely and ask for a few minutes of our time. Thank you very much. There's just one thing I'd like to add to what's been said is that in the States especially, there's a service uh, called Videotape Network and New Line Cinema. They have available 30-minute, uh, 45-minute, and 60-minute cassettes uh, interviews with people like Toffler and Future Shock, uh, John Dean, programs like Megillah Gorilla, uh, National Lampoon Show. Uh, they rent for about $150 a shot. You can have them for a week. You can show them as many times as you want. They have deals for 10 tapes or whatever. A lot of college campuses use them in their programming. They'll buy $1,000 worth of tapes over a year. We have catalogs down in our office from both Videotape and New Line. And if people are interested uh, in ordering them as a group or through CUTV or through the DSA, I'm sure something can be arranged with the program uh, board. Tomorrow night, uh, starting at 7, we have Contemporary Entertainment with Sheldon Kagan and Linda Moffat talking about uh, musical attractions. Then uh, at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, I'll be talking about lecture programs, and on Thursday we'll be having a few people in to talk about publicity and promotion. Excuse me, Bill, there is one important thing that I forgot to mention. I would be very happy, no, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. I'd be very happy to arrange, but not to do it myself, a tour of our facilities. I noticed that some of you uh, didn't know where the, the film library was. Many of you may not have seen our television studios. Uh, you may not know where we're located. If, through Bill, you can ask for a short time, you follow